Thank you, Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, so the topic which I'm going to talk today about is that antibiotics in Yamuna and, it, and the aquifers of Delhi is holy waters breeding superbugs. I hope all of you must uh, be knowing about this story which broke out about a month back in most of the media, the, the, the publication of ours, the first publication to show that how this river water is affecting the aquifers of Delhi, which came out. So I would like to just tell you about what was our observation. But this, our story started by something differently. Finally, we land up in looking at the river and looking at the aquifers. There are several ramifications of our finding, but for today's presentation, I try to restrict between these two. I'm not extrapolating it to other things, which is of, of much importance in the interest of time. What is more important for us is that always India has been targeted that we are breeding superbugs. But we were not ready to accept that story that it's only, it was 2009, uh, a patient of Indian origin went to Swedish hospital and was diagnosed with the klebsiella being resistant to antibiotics. And the resistance was not a simple resistance. We call it is a New Delhi metallobetalactamase gene. It was containing that gene which makes most of the antibiotics like penicillin in active. So therefore it was attributed to one thing that Indians are misusing antibiotics. <coughs> but we were not ready to buy that argument Indians are misusing antibiotics. Okay. All of you must be knowing very well if, the, if you have been prescribed with a drug for three days, you will take one day and you will decide not to take on the second day. I think most of us follow the same regimen, and that was the most responsible for the failure of drug treatment for tuberculosis. We lost tuberculosis track because of that, which is a well known strategy. How come you say that Indians are eating most of misusing antibiotics? Polypharmacy has been talked about, but we took other way around. It was an accidental finding that once we were trying to work with mass spectrometry, where we could start picking up some of the antibiotics coming in drinking water. So after that, we started looking into the, uh, the next immediate thing what we thought is that let's look into River Emuna. The moment when we started our walk into River Emuna, we got an entirely different thing which came out. This is about the story about that how the superbug was, I mean, found at different places of the different places and it has been consequently reported in India at different places. And I'm not going to talk about that how this, how the superbugs are getting created because of the low dose of antibiotics being exposed to them. I'm not going to talk the story, but there is a, a sound scientific proof. If you just administer low concentration of antibiotic, a microbe gets resistance. And this is a well-known story. So and another important study which came from uh, our institute is that the National uh, Neonatal Study, in which we found that most of the uh, neonatal death, I mean the newborn baby is dying because of sepsis, and that is because of the superbugs which are resistant to known antibiotics. Today, I must tell you at the Alnester Medical Sciences, we handle several cases now. They keep on increasing with the drug resistance. In future, right, near future, we are going to have no drugs to treat the type of infection. And now we started using all reserve type of reserve line drugs for human uh, therapy. So this is a bacterial infection, neonatherapy is from uh, the study which came out Lancet, which talks about the neonatal infection because of superbugs. See, this is one of the major thing. So our story, when we started getting the small insight about the presence of, uh, presence of uh, bacteria, presence of antibiotics, we were just trying to look into it. So I think there's some small bug. I'll just try to work it on. <laughs> yes, it's a computer bug. This works. Yeah. Yes, it's fine. It's fine. So the story came up uh, about. Uh, this happens, yes. Uh, yes, fine. That's good. The story came up in 2015 that we have been asked to talk about symposium on non putrefying properties of Ganga water. That time we rolled out the idea about that antibiotics we found in Yamuna River. And we attributed to several things. There was a preliminary report. Based on that preliminary report, we started working on further things. <laughs> to, our, uh, uh, to the to our surprise, what we found is that when we try to calculate the how much amount of drugs being consumed by people in Delhi, 
you will not believe which was amounting to more than 30 tons in an year. Any drug. Any one person, just think about it, you know, over a period of an, uh, a month, you must have taken one ta tablet of paracetamol. If you try to calculate it, we have taken more than that of any industry could produce and throw into dustbin. Popularly, what we think of? Everybody we think, suppose if you are left with a strip of antibiotics, what you will do? You look into the expiry date, after that what you will do? You will throw into dustbin. Am I right? You are not going to eat it again. What do you think about expiry date? That means May uh, uh, 15th of May, it was alive at the midnight of uh, 12, and the morning 1 o'clock, the drug is dead. It's not so. Expiry date doesn't mean that the drug is dead. It's active. It is active up to 90% of its concentration. That's what pharmacopoeia talks about. So our calculation went on that, OK, if that kind of things have been thrown, what's happening to uh, you know river? I mean, how the Yamuna is getting contaminated because of this? One is pollution. You talk about industries. You talk about agriculture. You talk about other fields. Have you ever talked about yourself, your home? What do we do normally at home? We throw into dustbin. Now the story started from there. Let me just show you the data what we have generated in the publication we had in Nature, uh, Springer Nature about this. This is a model where thermostat non-adherence model is a well-known model. Why patient is not taking antibiotics or a full course of therapy is well-known. So it, it just helped us to understand furthermore. And this paper came out in uh, uh, this Environmental Science and Pollution Research. As Chairman was talking about it, this publication talks completely about the samples which we audited it and calculated and published. And we are going ahead with further more chemicals which are coming into the one which are having impact on endocrines and uh, which are responsible for diabetes as well as cancer, which is going ahead with this thing. So let me just tell you the brief highlights of this. India uses more and more groundwater than any, or any other country. So now when you keep on sucking the groundwater, the groundwater aquifers are being filled up with the underground uh, river flow from the underground water flow from the rivers. That is a hydration, hydrological cycle. So in that case, Yamuna water is being transported into your uh, bore well. If that is the case, what happened to these pollutants? I know that most of the places that we have visited, our team, we have visited most of the drainages which are joining in Delhi. You will not believe 22 kilometer stretch of Yamuna in Delhi is contributing 70% of its pollution on its course, when it, I mean, before it meets the sea. So the Delhi is a major contributor of this. And all these places, wherever drain is entering, you will not find any treatment plants, just it is entering. To my surprise, the big Nala, which is coming from all industrial medical sciences, is draining there. Now it is cemented with a, a you know, sort of a bridge above. But if you just go and see the old Google map, you see them entering into River Yamuna. So that, that much is the pollution which we are contributing to rivers. What we did is that objective was quantification of inlet outlet level of important antimicrobials because our interest was in antibiotics. Later, we transformed into other drugs. We chose about 28, 28 antibiotics, which are different, different classification categories, along with some of the drugs which we commonly use for pain, like paracetamol, like diclofenac, like ibuprofen. These are all the drugs we chose here and some antihypertensive drugs because everybody takes antihypertensive this day. So we took some of the sample anti antihypertensives. And to, you know, we went on analyzing it. And we took the bore water from most of the places in northern part of uh, Delhi. See, wherever we could access, we could take it because many places it is illegal because we are not allowed to take also because the, the, the owners of the bore wells are not ready to give water. So whatever we have taken, we could do the analysis. And uh, in the course of the river Yamuna, we could pick up all the points wherever we could just pick up the water, water, water samples. And you see the places wherever we have taken the water sample. These are all the places where the drains are entering into, Nara, into Yamuna, right from uh, you know, uh, the full course of uh, Delhi. And about some 40 kilometers radius around Delhi and CR, we here mocked it and picked up the borewell samples. And uh, right from the uh, Wazirpur to Vokla Barrage, we could take the sample. And all other places, we took the borewell samples and subjected for mass spectrometric analysis after validating the methods as per US FDA criteria in our high precision bioanalytical laboratory, which was supported by DST first. So this is all the antibiotics, antifungals, antibacterials. I mean, I mean, antibacterial we divide into some 
two, three types, that is different type of aminoglycosides, as well as penicillin type of compounds, fluoroquinolone, these are all pharmacological classifications. We try to use it for different, different conditions of, uh, uh, you know, in the different conditions of disease. So this is the total uh, map, which we put it on Google when we try to do, uh, you know, we just put all the drugs together uh, to make some meaningful uh, derivation out of it. Okay, these are all the concentrations we are filing at different, different both sides. And what is happening to this? This is what just general uh, information what we wanted to gather. But surprisingly, we started getting somewhere in the, uh, uh, somewhere in the lower part, we're getting very high concentration in the aquifers which you are seeing is the black star, black dot in between. So that concentration here is a very high levels, and uh, I mean, there are the different categories. We made it to 2.5 to 24 nanomicrogram per liter, 24 to 240 microgram per liter, one milligram per, per liter. That is very high, which we cannot expect that these kind of drugs are available at the bottom of uh, earth at 100 feet depth at the concentration of one milligram per ml, the, about the 28 drugs, what we are trying to do. And we found that, then we were surprised that why at the particular place we are finding very high concentrations. So we went to analyze the place, to our surprise, we found this big landfill, Ghazipur landfill. The Ghazipur landfill, so today one of the questions is about the low hanging fruits. The one of the biggest low hanging fruits is the Ghazipur landfill. To my surprise, all the landfills in the course of the river are all producing leachates, which are running like a, you know, drainage is continuously being fed into the river. And do you believe what is it containing? The drugs what you threw into dustbin. This is on your hand that we are not able to do one thing which is in our hand. What do you expect something else? Industry pollutions coming from all other sources are much less as compared to the pollution what we are making it being an inhabitant of Delhi. Irresponsibly we throw because we don't segregate it. So yeah, we have enough data to prove that this is published in this paper. If somebody is interested, I would definitely love to share this paper with you. It's, uh, so this is how we just we, we could we could we could just put it in a graph. To the nutshell, you know, I'm not going in more in detail about all these things. What you're talking about it, but we found that the uh, groundwater aquifers are being contaminated with antibiotics. To my surprise, in one of the blog, somebody wrote it that if you want to get rid of pain, you drink a liter of that uh, you know water. So that can't take that much amount of drug. This is really surprising, but it's funny. But it's true. So you see that they are all having profound impact on uh, in the, the cycle. They can, you know, these drugs are capable of killing a bacteria in your body. They can kill the same bacteria in the soil. And they are all involved in the biological cycle. They have a very good equilibrium. The equilibrium is destroyed. Some other species is going to dominate it. And we are, go we are ahead of so many other problems later. So when we just try to figure out the leachate, which is coming from the uh, landfill, when we analyzed it, you will be surprised having very high concentration in milligrams of this drug, diclofenac, ibuprofen, and you know, we were getting all, all, all azole type of compounds, we call that antifungal agents, we could find at very high concentration. Now, what, 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 is, what is the uh, impact of it? If you, be, you, will, you will not believe, that leachate which is coming out from the Gazipo landfill is directly feeding the bird century. Now, we are expecting the vanishing vulture story of Delhi. I wanted to loop it to this. If somebody is working on vanishing vultures, because now our focus is on that. So if somebody could help me out in that and we'll be able to link it with that. Now you say ibuprofen and uh, diclofenac, they're all potent COX-2 inhibitors. COX inhibitors are very dangerous for any of the birds which are enough adequately present over there. So when we just go near and we try to figure it out, okay, we are just using solid dump into electricity, but what is happening to the liquid dump? You cannot dump it, you need to clarify it. We could see so much of most of the surface water, and I mean, absolutely Yamuna is polluted. Now, aquifers are being polluted. More than 80% of the places wherever we took groundwater, we found more than you know, 0 0.01 microgram per ml, which is equivalent to China. Because this is the first study which is coming from India, Nobody have nobody done this kind of this before, but I would say that we are now ahead of China. Unless otherwise, we start using segregation. And we need to, you know, I wrote a letter to Drug Controller of India asking that we should implement how to dispose the drugs which are expired. Even we have suggested that they should dump it in a waste basket as it is done in Europe or in the United States to the pharmacies, and the pharmacy is supposed to destroy it by fire. 
It cannot be just thrown into dustbin or it cannot be thrown into you know, a, a landfill. This is what we just figured it out about ofluconazole, ofloxin, diclofenac. You know, what we would do is that we have also predicted it. How much is it because of the human usage or wastage? We could not predict the human usage with the wastage. We always, we could have a, a very good prediction only with environmental usage. That is what the whole study is all about. Yes, the answer. So this is what is a all thing all about, about different, different classification of drugs we have done it. About azithromycin, we use it for, you know, throat infections. And mostly in Delhi people have throat infection, we use it for azithromycin, superfloxacin. If somebody is having diarrhea, we use this drug. Ibuprofen, if you have a body pain, we use this drug. And uh, diclofenac, yes, it's again another uh, painkiller. These are common painkillers, you know, you can buy over the counter. So these are all we found at very high concentration. What is responsible for this is this Ghazipur landfill. And Delhi is having four landfills. So now you see the magnitude. We could study only one. With that itself, we could predict so much. Now we need not to study furthermore. And we should look for it for its attribution. So this is a conclusion of ours is that, just to give you the natural idea about it, we wanted a segregated disposal of drugs being used at different places. So if this is being practiced, and there should be, if there is a way to dispose this properly, we will be able to reduce the amount of more than 30 tons of unused drug being dumped into these uh, places where it is getting equilibrated with the uh, aquifers and it is getting into our uh, bore wells. And uh, with that, I just try to finish my uh, presentation. Thank you very much. And uh, thank, thanks to Mr. Ji for giving this opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Panyan. It's interesting, but I think.